On Five News, Tara Palmer Tomkinson, the socialite and it girl, has died. The 45-year-old was found dead in her flat this afternoon. Her godfather and close friend, Prince Charles, pays tribute. Also, how one woman's victory could help millions of unmarried couples. Diane Brewster lived with her partner for 10 years before he died but was denied his pension. Now she's finally won the right to it. A mother's wish list for her daughter and how it had to change when she discovered her baby was terminally ill. You're there to push your child and teach your child and do the best for them. So there's no point in focusing too much on the down and the bad. You just move on and upwards. And Blind Date is back, but who will replace our Scylla? Hello and welcome to Five News, I'm Sean Williams. The former socialite Tara Palmer Tomkinson has died at the age of 45. The it girl and goddaughter of the Prince of Wales revealed last year she had been diagnosed with a brain tumour. Tonight, Prince Charles and the Duchess of Cornwall said they were deeply saddened. Here's Julian Drucker. One of Britain's best-known socialites, Tara Palmer Tomkinson is an almost permanent fixture on the red carpet and a regular on reality TV. But the route to fame of the self-proclaimed it girl was unusual. A goddaughter of the Prince of Wales, her father is one of his closest friends. She maintained a close relationship with the royal family this was her at the wedding of William and Kate in 2011. This evening, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall have said, we are deeply saddened and our thoughts are so much with the family. Palmer Tomkinson revealed late last year that she'd been diagnosed with a brain tumour. Police were called to the 45-year-old's flat in South Kensington earlier this afternoon, where she was found dead. It's not clear if her death was linked to the condition. She had spoken frankly in the past about her battles with drugs, including in this interview in 2014. From that first moment, how quickly did you become a regular cocaine user? Very quickly. I mean, hor horrifically quickly. Tonight, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, snakes, maggots, leaves... Pig but to many, pig, she'll be best pigs, known for her appearance on the very first series of I'm a Celebrity. The mainstay of celebrity magazines of the last 15 years who unashamedly lived her life and her problems in the public eye. Julian Drucker reporting on the death of Tara Palmer Tomkinson, who's died at the age of 45. Millions of couples who live together but who are not married could benefit from a Supreme Court ruling on pensions. At the moment, a husband or wife automatically gets their spouse's pension, but under some schemes, cohabiting couples do not. Diane Brewster went to court to fight that, and she won. The ruling could have an impact on the pension rights of anyone living with a nurse, a firefighter or a teacher, as Catherine Jones explains. Denise Brewster and Lenny McMullen shared their lives for 15 years, living together for 10 of them. But when Lenny died suddenly, two days after proposing to Denise, she was denied a share of his pension. After an eight-year legal battle, today the UK's highest court ruled Denise has been discriminated against because of her marital status. I had to do this for, for myself and Lenny. And this was much about me moving on as a person. Um, and the importance of our relationship to us. Um, and in order for me to move on properly, I had to go down this journey. The case hinged on the filling out of forms. Married couples don't have to complete them, but many public sector pension schemes insist unmarried couples must name the partner to get a survivor's allowance, something Lenny hadn't done. As a result of today's ruling, pensions for nurses, teachers and the police may have to change so they don't discriminate. Good for bereaved partners, potentially expensive for the public sector. It is potentially a hugely important decision because pension schemes haven't funded to pay uh, inherited pensions to unmarried partners. So there is going to be an extra cost and we know that pension schemes are already significantly underfunded and, and there are big deficits. Denise Brewster's solicitor believes private occupational pensions will also have to fall into line. This case was decided under the Human Rights Act and the Human Rights Act doesn't uh, apply to private pension scheme providers. 
Having said that, you'd expect them to not want to discriminate against their employees who are cohabitees, and so we think that many private scheme providers will also make changes. Lenny's pension will now give Denise some financial security, and the fight she took on after her sudden bereavement has helped secure better rights for many more unmarried couples. Catherine Jones, 5 News. MPs will vote in a few hours on giving Theresa May the power to trigger the start of talks over Britain's split from the European Union. The Brexit bill is widely expected to be passed in the House of Commons, but the vote is predicted to cause problems for Labour, with many senior MPs expected to defy the party leader Jeremy Corbyn and vote against the bill. Now, it's well known that there's a crisis in social care in England, with many elderly and vulnerable people facing desperate waits to get help from their local authority. But today, the actions of one council to try to fix its funding problems has led to allegations involving leaked texts and claims of backroom deals. Surrey said it was going to hold a referendum, asking residents whether they'd be prepared to see a council tax increase of 15% to pay for social care. Now it's dropped the idea, and the Labour leader says that's because the government has cut a deal. Our political editor, Andy Bell, reports. Paying for social care is a huge problem, so much so that Surrey County Council had intended to ask local people in a referendum if they'd pay an extra 15% in council tax to fund it. But in a surprise move at this meeting yesterday, they abandoned the idea. Today, Labour claimed that was because the council had been secretly offered extra money by central government. So how much did the government offer Surrey to kill this off? And is the same sweetheart deal on offer to every council facing the social care crisis created by her government? Yet again, what we get from Labour are alternative facts. What, what, um, what, uh, what they really need is an alternative leader. Labour say these messages show the leader of Surrey County Council, David Hodge, texting someone called Nick, who he thought was a government official. The final text says, The numbers you indicated are the numbers that I understand are acceptable for me to accept and call off the R, presumably R, for referendum. The text concludes, Really want to kill this off. This was David Hodge yesterday, after the referendum was called off. There's a way forward which does not involve a council tax referendum. Today he's only issued a statement saying there was no deal, but also saying he was confident now the government understood the real pressures and the need for a lasting solution. Downing Street has also insisted there was no deal, but Labour are adamant these messages show a Conservative government did a Conservative council a favour on social care. Let's talk to Andy now, who's at Westminster. So, deal or no deal, whoever you believe, why is this so important, Andy? Because every council in the country, Sean, is struggling to pay for adult social care and, frankly, they would all love to get their hands on a bit more money to help them pay for it. In fact, tonight, just as an example, Nottinghamshire County Council has written an open letter to Theresa May essentially saying, look, whatever deal was done with Surrey, can we have a bit of it? Now, we have to stress, Surrey County Council number 10 are saying there was no deal to provide extra money. But maybe the clue is in the words that, was you, that were used by David Hodge there, where he said he now had an appreciation that the government fully understood the pressures on councils to provide adult social care. Perhaps there is something bigger coming in terms of government policy, a funding formula to allow councils, all councils in the UK, to be able to find more money to pay for adult social care. Perhaps, as we don't know at this stage whether there has been a deal or not, frankly, perhaps we should be looking towards the budget to see if there is more money going to be made available for that. OK, Andy, thank you. Coming up on 5 News. The man accused of killing Helen Bailey claims he was assaulted by a menacing stranger on the day she vanished. Hoping to hear her say, Mummy and Daddy, a mother's wish list for her terminally ill little girl. You have to get up and get on with it, don't you? I mean, Cara's here, I'm going to give her the best life I can, so you just do what you have to do. And why TV classic Blind Date is coming back to our screens. We'll see you after the break.
Welcome back. You're watching Five News. The fiancé of a children's author who's on trial for her murder has claimed two men had been threatening the couple. Ian Stewart is accused of drugging and killing Helen Bailey in April last year. Crying in court, he denied having anything to do with her death. Dominic Reynolds was at St Albans Crown Court. Helen Bailey's brother came to court today to hear from the man accused of murdering his successful sister to take her money. But that man, Ian Stewart, told a jury his life with Helen Bailey was idyllic and he already had much more money than he could spend. He was asked if they ever argued. He said, no, I can categorically say that because after we were in a relationship for six months, Helen said to me, this isn't a proper relationship, we haven't had an argument. She said, I'm scared if we ever have an argument because I don't know what would happen, but I guarantee we will make up. He's accused of giving Helen these Zopiclone sleeping pills prescribed for him, but allegedly slipped into her food to knock her out. But he said he didn't drug her, he didn't smother her to death, and he didn't drag her body in a duvet out to the garage. Helen Bailey owned three houses. This is where she lived with her fiancé. Now, she was last seen on April the 11th last year. He reported her missing three days later. But it was three months before police found her body and the body of her dog in a cesspit under the garage. I really hope that the book brings you some comfort. But Helen Bailey spoke sense, online and wrote a book about her experience of grief after her first husband so died. She met Ian I'm Stewart in a grief have. support and group online. The they were due to get married to last September. Quiet. A few days ago, the jury heard the 101 non-emergency call Ian Stewart made to report her missing. Oh, how should please, how can I help? Hello there. My partner has been missing since Monday and not contacted anyone. Said she was going away, hasn't gone, ended up where she said she was going. So I'm, we've just decided we should report it. Just a few minutes ago, Ian Stewart explained this, that a man came to the house on the day Helen disappeared, punched him in the stomach and said they were taking Helen away and that they'd harm her if he said anything about it. Mr Stewart's cross-examination will start tomorrow. Dominic Reynolds, 5 News at St Albans Crown Court. The disgraced entertainer Rolf Harris has been cleared of three sex assault charges but could face a retrial on another four allegations. The 86-year-old is already in prison after being convicted in 2014 of 12 sex offences. It's claimed some banks are charging more for unauthorised overdrafts than it would cost to borrow the money from a payday loan company. The consumer group Witch found that some bank customers are being charged seven times more than the maximum amount for a payday loan. It's calling for a crackdown on the charges. Donald Trump has lashed out at judges who suspended his controversial travel ban. Speaking to a group of police chiefs, he read out a law that grants the president powers to prevent non-citizens entering the US if they're considered a threat. And he said the laws are not difficult to understand. You can be a lawyer or you don't have to be a lawyer. If you were a good student in high school or a bad student in high school, you can understand this. And it's really incredible to me that we have a court case that's going on so long. Dancing and horse riding, just two of the dreams Sarah Gardner had for her unborn child. Like many parents-to-be, Sarah was full of hope. In fact, she even wrote a long wish list of goals for her baby. But her daughter Clara was born with a rare genetic disorder, making those wishes impossible to realise. Sarah, though, says she will not give up on her little girl, and she's written her a new list instead. Peter Lane has been to meet them both. To try to dance, um, horse riding, travel the world obviously, uh, be independent, earn good money and to have a great job. Sarah wrote this list when she was pregnant, goals and achievements for her child in the years to come. But then these scans revealed her baby wasn't growing fast enough and doctors had to deliver Clara early by caesarean section. Tess later revealed she has the very rare Smith-Lemley-Opitz syndrome. <laughs> it means Clara, now two, has learning difficulties, weak <laughs> muscles, heart, liver and immune problems. Doctors told Sarah her daughter may never walk or talk and could have a shorter lifespan. So Sarah rewrote 
that and list. list the new list. For Clara to learn to smile, uh, to be able to giggle and laugh and show enjoyment, um, to hold items, to crawl, um, to stand up and sit on her own, to hear Clara speak, um, to say mummy or daddy. It's a completely different world, isn't it? The list is about living this moment. Yes, it's living for now, pushing for what Clara can do for now. I mean, I don't know what the future holds, nobody does. You have to get up and get on with it, don't you? I mean, Clara's here, I'm gonna give her the best life I can, so you just do what you have to do. There's always gonna be someone worse off than you, and I think any parent looks at it that way, and you try and find the positive for your child, otherwise, what's the point? You're there to push your child and teach your child and do the best for them. So there's no point in focusing too much on the down and the bad, you just move on and upwards. The next step upwards would be seeing specialists in America, so the family's fundraising online, hoping doctors there can improve the years Clara does have. Your child's brave, that's what you get a lot, but she's not brave, she's strong. She can't choose to be brave, she just has to deal with it, so she's strong. Yeah. <laughs> and that strength recently saw one thing ticked off the new list, when Clara spoke and said, Mama. Can you give me a kiss? Mwah. Yay. Peter Lane, 5 News. Well and if you want to see more about Clara's story, do visit our Facebook page. You just search for C5 News. The scriptwriter Alan Simpson has died at the age of 87. He was famous for TV shows Hancock's Half Hour and Steptoe and Son. What have you got there? Toothpick. His manager said he died following a long battle with lung disease. He's awarded an OBE in the year 2000 for his contribution to British television. Now, it was one of the most loved game shows on British television for almost 20 years, and now Blind Date is making a comeback. Countless numbers of couples jetted off on holiday to see if they could find romance, with a few even making it down the aisle. Of course, it was hosted by the late Cilla Black, so they'll have to be a new host. But just how different will the programme be to our Saturday night staple of the past? Here's our mini with a quick reminder. Cilla Black! For fans in the 80s and 90s, there was only one place and person to be with on a Saturday night. Blind Day with our Cilla. Hello, number one. What's your name and where do you come from? Hi, Cilla. I'm Lindsay and I'm from Nottinghamshire. Yeah. Queen matchmaker, bringing together the likes of our Jamie from Essex and our Jodie from North Wales. Come in, Jodie. <laughs> your hair won't be the only thing that's on fire. <laughs> Yes, the show is returning after more than 13 years, but this time it will be on Channel 5. The rumoured front-runner to present the show is reality TV star and Queen of the Jungle, Vicky Patterson. Of course, the news that Blind Date's returning is a perfect excuse to show you some former contestants before they were famous. Here's a 19-year-old Amanda Holden making her first TV appearance on the show. My name's Amanda and I'm from London. <laughs> Gadget show presenter Ortiz Dealey shared his date with the nation. See, I didn't get any romantic feedback off Shell you here. Didn't give me any. I did. I was playing cool. <laughs> so today our blind date is Nikki Graham. The reality TV star was once a contestant. So will its return be the perfect date? or a romantic disaster? I am so excited that Blind Date's coming back. I must have done that show about 14, 15 years ago. It makes me feel very old. Um, yeah, so I'm just so excited. And at its height, over 18 million people watch the show. TV critics say producers are hoping that Blind Day still has universal appeal. They're bringing these shows back because it's been almost a generation since they've been on. Strange to say, but there are loads of people out there who've never even heard of Blind Date. Secondly, you've got inbuilt publicity. People who do know the show will be excited about it. It's thought Blind Date will return to our screens later this year. Now, over a decade may have passed, but let's be honest, audacious chat-up lines never get old. Minnie Stevenson, 5 News. Good to see it back. Before we go, Matt's joined us to tell us what's coming up on 5 News tonight. Hi there. Hi, Sean. We'll be talking tonight about a new campaign that's urging people to write a living will. The family of Miles Kemp, who was injured badly in a snowboarding accident, wanted to withdraw treatment that was keeping him alive against their wishes. 
will hear their story. We'll also have more reaction to the shocking death of Tara Palmer Tomkinson for a long time. She was one of the most photographed women in Britain in her role as a TV presenter and reality star. We'll take a look at the impact she had, Sean. All right. Thanks, Matt. See you later. That is it for now, though. Claire Nazir has the weather for you next. I'll see you again tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Matt will be back at 6.30. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.